Hi guys, I just recorded my first ever large scale fluid art geode resin pour. I did learn a lot of things from it and I hope that you will find this information useful if it's your first time doing it. Maybe I can save you some stress or hassle or trial and error steps that I had to endure. So I hope you guys enjoy it. it. Overall, it was a really fun process and it was a good springboard for me and I'm looking forward to making more. I'm hooked. Do I have a plan, you ask? Um, no, I don't. I probably should. I'm thinking kind of clear on the inside and then I should have a plan, shouldn't I? Okay, so from looking at like actual resin geode tables, I can see that usually in the center they go more translucent and around the sides they go opaque. More around the center I see like rocks and then maybe some like drops kind of peppering into the translucent part. Um, but that is from like a recreation of a geode. Uh, I'm going to look at an actual picture of a geode and see if I can get any inspiration from that. So this is a actual geode. It is a dyed geode. Um, I can see that there are like varied alternate layers of opaque, clear, opaque, clear. Um, that might be kind of tricky for me to do right now. So I'm just gonna start out with just the opaque into clear middle and see how that goes. So I have a bit of a plan now, um, thank God. Uh, I found these kind of, what's the word, iridescent bead type things um, that I'm gonna put around in the center. I have, I don't, I want to go for a purple vibe, but I don't have purple alcohol ink, so I'm hoping that this red and this blue, oh my god, shit just fell over. At this point, what I can only describe as a poltergeist has knocked over a giant organizer of beads onto my floor. This poltergeist has cursed the alcohol ink, thus making my purple not purple. I'm not saying that this is what actually happened. I just think this is what actually happened. Cool. Anyways, hoping that will make a purple along with this white opaque dye, which will make it opaque because these alone will just turn the resin translucent. And I also have some iridescent powder here to add some kind of shimmer and some gold flake that will add some interest as well. At this point, I stop gabbing and get down to business because I needed to concentrate. Now I'm using a thicker resin for this project. It is by Faux Rizzle and it is thicker than I'm used to working with. Initially, you'll see that I have poured not enough resin. You'll see me frantically trying to mix up more batches. So do yourself a favor and pour a proper amount of resin. Now when it comes to mixing this stuff, since it is thicker, you will struggle a lot with mixing it as opposed to maybe a thinner viscosity resin. And it is very, very, very important that you mix it as much as you can. And they actually do recommend that you pour it from one cup into another and mix it again because the two different parts can get stuck to the side. Because I was so frantically mixing more resin because I wasn't prepared, you can see little tiny like web-like structures I want to say in the resin. They're not like super noticeable. It just annoys me. It irks me. It's not like perfectly crystal clear but it definitely you can't notice from far away. Just a heads up when it comes to mixing this resin. Here I'm going to add some texture to my piece. I'm using these piece this so funny story I bought moonstone chips from Wish which was my first mistake 
Um, these are not moonstone. They are glass beads with a iridescent coating. So, I mean, it's my own fault, but uh, I am using them here, which is good. And right now I am obsessively arranging them because that's how I am. Right now I'm mixing up some opaque white, which I will be using for banding and also as a base for my opaque ring around the geode. At this point, you will witness the curse unfold with your very eyeballs. As you can see, the red looks fine, and then I add in the blue, and the blue looks great. But once I start mixing, the red just turns to nothing. Like, maybe black, I think? It's just perplexing. And at this point, I am questioning my very knowledge of primary colors and color theory, and I'm like, wait, blue and red do make purple, right? Like, and with white, that should be light purple. So I'm adding in more red and realizing that it's just simply not working. So as a last ditch effort, I just squeeze in so much blue into there to make it blue. At a certain point, I am satisfied with the color I was able to achieve and continue with my adventure. Here I'm mixing up some of my favorite iridescent pigments from Faux Rizzle. It is called... I forgot. I'll put the name in later. But it's really cool. I was expecting to use it with a purple. So it didn't come out quite as I wanted with the blue, but it turned out fine. I'm also mixing up a just a plain white for the banding. Um, later on, I realized that I didn't want like a stark white. And I think for my next pour, I'm going to add a little tint to tone down the contrast. At this point, I'm thinking, hey, let's do some banding, since I want it to show up on the other side. Um, I didn't realize how thick it was going to be, and I think that was one of the downfalls of the final result. Also, I think I would go a little bit more opaque and a little thinner, and also not as bright, and maybe I would lay down a primer of just clear resin on the bottom so it could kind of slide around. I'm also adding in my iridescent pink color into the inner ring and also starting to fill in that center of the geode with some clear resin. At this point I'm hitting it with some gold flakes and this mixture of gold leaf, bronze leaf, and it has like oxidized blue in there, I guess. I love this mixture. Everything I'm using, I will link in the comments so you can get everything that I have used in this video. And here I'm just uh, trying to mix up a more translucent blue and for some reason, damn, okay, like I didn't learn my lesson and I'm just like, hey, I'm just gonna throw some freaking red in there and see what happens. And to be fair, I did get a color similar to my opaque color, so we, you know, it was fine. And lastly, I fill in the edges with my opaque teal. After that, I'm sort of trying to fill up the volume with more resin just because I hadn't realized how much resin. Of course it's like six coasters but I wasn't thinking clearly and I'm used to making very small items. And bam right there I dripped some of my teal into my clear. Potentially disastrous but thankfully this resin is really good at holding color so all I have had to do was grab a tool and remove some of that color. 
So don't panic. Things can be fixed. If not, it's all about creating a solution to the problem you just made. At this point, I'm just mixing resin and trying to fill up a mold. Um, it is really cool to watch how the resin moves around as you add more to it, depending where you pour. So I kind of enjoyed that. And especially in like fast forward. Sure. It looks pretty well. Wow, that's like a throwback to tapes. Anyways, it looks sick. So from my frantic mixing, I did whip up a whole lot of bubbles into the resin. And this resin isn't very forgiving when it comes to bubbles. So this is where your heat gun can come in super handy. I did set it on low um, and it did work really well for popping those surface bubbles. But I did end up getting a lot of bubbles in the actual resin itself. Um, and I do use the heat gun to move some of the resin around and create a cool effect. At this point, let's be honest, I could have stopped, could have walked away, it would have been fine. But you know what, this is like my test piece. So I figured I would do some straight alcohol ink drops in attempt to get some of that petri dish around that clear rim. And you can also see me working the heat gun and moving some of those drops around. Hi, it's time y'all. I'm so excited, I am like sweating. I have been at work all day just thinking about this, wanting to demold it and see what's on the other side. And to be honest, I did way too much to it, so I <laughs> hope it's not ruined. If it does look bad on the other side, at least this side looks kinda cool. I'm going to start. Okay, so far so good. Coming out of the mold. What? That, I did not expect. Holy shit, that looks cool. There are like micro bubbles in here for me like furiously <laughs> whipping up a shit ton of resin, but like, not bad. And you can see all the little pebbles in there. The color didn't come out as I expected because that like red ink is just old or something and it just did not want to turn to purple. But I am not too mad with the blue that has resulted. Yo! You can see some of the um alcohol ink drops I did over there. You can see where I used the heat tool and it's kind of peeking through. You can see the iridescence in these pebbles. I am like pleasantly surprised. That's where I was like Some things that I think I'm going to change for next time is not use pure white. I think that contrast is too extreme. I'm going to buy fresh alcohol inks so the color actually works. I'm going to mix up more resin and maybe not 
mess around with it as much. This effect is cool. It looks like cracked geode stuff, if that makes any sense. But yeah, not bad. And you can see the clear layer here. I just wish it was more consistent, but overall, pretty happy with the result. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions, any ideas. I would love to hear them. Thank you for keeping me company through this crazy process. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.